Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Jones. I've gotten a lot of questions about how um, I use assessment data and what an assessment data uh, binder looks like. So I've got mine all set up. This is the summer before I meet these students, but everything is already set up uh, for them in the assessment data binder. So I thought I'd walk you through what's in it. Uh, it's about a one inch binder. Um, I don't suggest that you um, go any bigger than that. The bigger the binder, the more likely you're going to put stuff in it. Uh, and you really want it to be small and portable enough that you can um, have it go anywhere. And right now I know you're thinking, wow, it's the school year hasn't even started yet. It's pretty full. Um, but it's not going to get much fuller than this. I've already filled out all the data sheets for my students. Um, what I'll do is as I add assessments throughout the year, I'll take out the old sheets and um, then add uh, new ones. So it really won't get any bigger than this. And it's pretty full. So when um, I open it up, the first thing um, are the individualized education plans for the students that I have. Now I have quite a few students uh, this year with IEPs. And so what I've done is, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's a lot of stuff in the IEP that you actually don't really need. Um, it's things like how many hours of services they get and what's the graduation plan and the transition plan and, and things like that. Um, there's pages of modifications, but modifications are pretty standard for special needs students. What I really need as a special educator are um, their present levels of functioning, and you see I've done a little bit of highlighting. I'm flipping through it kind of fast because I, I didn't put post-its to cover the student's identity. And I really need to know their IEP goals. So that's pretty much all I need to know. So I've cut it down. I've basically cut about 10 pages off of each IEP. So even though I've got six of them, um, they do fit in this pocket uh, very well. And uh, it's a good place to, to keep them, to keep track of those kind of things. In the very front of my binder, I have an assessment web. And this is super cool, but I have to say this is not my idea. This is from the book Day-to-Day -Day Assessment in the Reading Workshop by Frankie Stiverson. Um, I just adapted it to my needs. And I created this using PowerPoint because that's the easiest way to manipulate both words and, um, and uh, images, in this case, the shapes. So each student has a liter literacy assessment profile that has the formative assessments we do in the grade level, that's the rectangles, the formative and summative assess assessments that we use, that's the hexagon, and the summative as assessments, which are the trapezoids. And this makes it really, really easy to compare um, a single assessment to each other over time. But if you have to do some um, data triangulation, if you want to compare the NWEA MAP score to an IRI, or you want to compare your class observations to my high stakes assessment, I can easily do that. I love this form. I use it all the time. Um, I, other people in my school just absolutely love it, and I, I make copies for people um, because everything is, is right there exactly where you need it to be. So the first tab over here is reading. So for reading, I, I'm very lucky. Uh, my students come with portfolios that has all of their test data and actual samples of their work. So I've actually started um, a chart for the entire class on their NWEA MAP scores. Um, and I, I like putting them all in a chart because it not only gives me a place to put the score, but then I can put how much they grew or didn't, and then the new score in the fall, and the same thing, growth, and then the winter score, and then growth, and then the spring score. And you can see I've highlighted students who are not on grade level. <coughs> Another form that I have in here that I just, uh, I just love, and I keep this both in my um, assessment data binder and in my, my teaching binder, which I'll show you in another video, and that's this assessment to instruction planning sheet, which I've been using since 2009. Um, I, I just love how everything is laid out for me. Um, what do most of my students already know how to do that I don't have to work on? What do a lot of students struggle with? These are my whole class lessons. Um, for the next month or so, like the first month or so of school. That's the way this binder is set up right now. And then I've got students um, put into uh, groups by skill. 
And you notice what I've done is I've put um, their NWEA MAP score in, in parentheses next to their name. This particular group happens to be quite large, and I wouldn't instruct this as a group. Um, I would have to pull out students and make a couple of subgroups, most likely. And so these um, NWEA MAP numbers help me figure out uh, what are the subgroups that I need to use. And I've done the same thing over here for the Language Arts uh, NIWA math test. Um, I use IRIs as formative assessments to keep track of my students. And this is from the IRA. I love to use the Basic Inventory by Jerry Johns. It's great for intermediate students um, because it has a real strong emphasis in comprehension. So this is a form to keep track of um, the types of questions that they answer and how well they do. <coughs> And then on the back is a, um, is a MISQ analysis, which I don't use as often with the intermediate grades, but I do with some students. Now, once I give the first IRI of the year, I actually place it in here with this form. So I have the hard data or the raw data as well as the numbers. When I go back in the wintertime to reassess, I'll take the fall IRI and put it um, in my file cabinet, and I'll just put the most current IRI here. So that's about the only thing that would be added to this notebook. All right, so now we're on to the math tab. The math tab, I also have a triangulation formula. This is a different color, so I can quickly see that I'm looking at math. It looks slightly different, um, and I got this idea from uh, the book um, Assessment and Perspective. Um, which is actually about using assessment and reading, but I thought it had a lot of applications to math. So it's very much like the literacy assessment web, but it is slightly different. So right now, the only part that I have filled out is the top part here. These three assessments are the end of year, end of third grade assessments that all students have. And this is our high stakes assessment, which oddly enough is in October. Um, and what I did is I, um, took the assessments and I sort of correlated them. I said, well, in the NWEA MAP test, below 199 is, is off the norm. In the GMAID, um, less, uh, the third, per, per, uh, third per, um, percentile rank, um, excuse me, the third stay nine or below is considered below uh, average. And at the, in the end of year everyday math class, I would say anything below a 79% is a little bit suspect. So I've written those numbers in for myself so I don't have to remember or think about it. And then I've plotted the numbers. And by looking at a student um, right here, I can really start to make some decisions about um, instruction. For example, this particular student got a 345 on the kneecap, and that puts her in the proficient range, but just barely, not with a lot of wiggle room. Yet at the end of year, so this is a, like a year later, um, she got a 95% on the everyday math um, end of year test, which is the math program that we use. However, in the GMAID and the NIWA math test, which are more um, norm reference tests, she, she didn't score quite as high. So that leads me to wonder, did she make a phenomenal growth this past year? Or perhaps she really knows her stuff, but she's not able to show what she knows in some of these norm reference tests. So maybe she needs a little more test prep. Um, I'm also planning on continuing to use this form throughout the year, so by the end of the year it's all going to be filled out. There's a place for me to, to show documentation. Um, there's a place for me to put the scores of um, the assessments that she's going to have in fourth grade, as well as math unit tests. So this should be a really, really helpful form. And I've already started filling, um, filling it out for some students. I forgot to put a post-it note in this one. But for example, this, this um, person, she had a really hard time with questions about graphs. So I've already slated and scheduled her to have um, an RTI, an in-class RTI, on uh, questions with, with graphs. Um, this person um, really struggled with subtraction. Um, and so I've already slated this child also for an in-class intervention. And then I also have some forms back here that are based on um, the, same, uh, the same form for the NEWA MAP test. And this is a form that I use to, to look at their um, end of year everyday math test. So the next section is writing. 
Um, in writing, I use the same rubric all year long. I take a blank copy of it. I take a writing sample from the end of third grade. I'm sorry. I take a writing sample from the end of third grade. You know, those technical difficulties there. Um, and I score it as if it were an end of fourth grade piece. And I, um, I circle what level I think they are. And then um, I set a goal for them. So basically I want everybody to be in that proficient category. So anytime I see a student who's got something circled that's not in that proficient or on grade level category, I color it in as a goal. And then every time I have a writing assignment, I copy this, and these come out as gray. And so I'm always looking at how are students doing in relation to their goal. For spelling, it's very simple. If it's the words their way spelling assessment. And then the last section is just blank copies of the forms that are in the re uh, rest of the notebook so that uh, if I have a new student who comes in, I can quickly uh, make copies so I know exactly where everything is. Um, I also have a couple of, of things in here. Um, this is my progress monitoring form that I created. It's back here. Um, I have information for me as a teacher. For example, I have the NWEA normative data, so I always know where that is. I have the fluency um, numbers for different um, reading levels, so I always know where that is um, as well. So that's a tour of my assessment uh, data binder, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave comments.